Hello and welcome back. It's Training Tuesday with Jolyn Payne and we are on part four and it's all about service dogs. The American Disabilities Act, which is the ADA, makes the rules and the laws on service dogs. So a service animal is a medical piece of equipment and because of this, they perform a task for the owner of the dog. So a task can be anything that is going to assist that owner with their disability. So if you have a person that is blind or has um, uh, poor eyesight, then they can have a guide dog. If you have somebody with um, poor balance, then you can have a mobility dog. If you have a person that is diabetic, you can have a diabetic alert dog. Um, there are several different um, uh, disabilities out there that dogs can help with. So amazing, because I remember when I was a kid, the only time that you saw a, a service dog was if you saw somebody that was blind. And we have just found out, you know, in the last decade or so, that dogs help with so many different um, disabilities. So we have to remember that some disabilities are not visual to the eye. So you can't just assume that somebody is um, walking through a store and they're faking a service dog or anything like that. There are some disabilities that you can't see, such as PTSD, you can't see autism, you can't see um, a, a person with diet that has diabetes and they need that dog to alert them when their sugar goes too high or too low. So just remember to have compassion for all of those um, people that are out there and have um, service animals. Um, so where do those dogs get to go? If they have a service animal, they're allowed to go anywhere in public that um, a human can go. So they can go into restaurants and grocery stores and things like this. Now we're actually talking about a real service animal that is providing a task to its owner. And so these dogs are very well trained and very well behaved no matter where they go. So if, if a business owner is unsure if, if they can't see that, that um, disability, there are only two questions that a business owner can ask. Number one, is the dog a service animal and do they require assistance because of the disability? They are not allowed to ask what the disability is. Number two, what work or task is the dog performing? Those are the only two questions that they are allowed to ask. Now, a business owner is not gonna walk up to somebody in a wheelchair and ask why they have a service animal. It's just obvious, but we have to remember that not all services or not all disabilities are visible to our eye. So how do you get a service dog if you need one? You can have one or purchase one that is professionally trained, um, such as canine uh, partners or, or um, there are organizations for seizure alert dogs and autism dogs and all like that. But you know what? You can train your own dog as well. Now, that takes a lot of training. You can't just go pick up a puppy, a golden retriever, a Labrador retriever, go to the shelter and go, this is gonna be my service animal because it takes a lot of training. We have to remember that that an average of only two to four puppies out of a professional litter of 10 to 12 even make a service animal because they have to have the temperament for it and they also have to have the training for it and, and not stress out in public. So the public access test is for owners and it's, it's more of a baseline, but it's not re required. So if you are training your own dog, you can ask a trainer to give you the public access test to see if your dog is ready to wear that vest out there. Um, if you have a puppy and you're just now training them so that you can have a ser service animal, remember the first year, you don't wanna be training those tasks. Let a puppy be a puppy, socialize them, and then just do some basic obedience for them because if you work them too hard when they're puppies, they're going to wash out. What that means is they're gonna break down and they're not gonna be that service animal that you want to. So what happens if you get a dog that just isn't uh, suited for service work? Then they can be your emotional support dog, or if you really need a service animal, you may have to rehome that dog just as a pet. 
Thanks, Jolyn. I really appreciate it. Reach out to her or any other trainers if you have more questions. We'll be right back after the break.